This episode of the Dog Training Revolution is crowdfunded by you and sponsored by PetFlow.com. If your dog is an over-the-top barker, then this episode of the Dog Training Revolution is for you. Calliope is a mini Australian Shepherd, and she's as vocal as she is smart, which means she must be a genius. Unwanted demand barking can get out of control in a hurry. Many of you already understand this firsthand, and I understand completely how overwhelming and frustrating it can be when everything you do doesn't seem to work. Don't worry though, today I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. Share this video because people rehome their dogs every day due to this issue. Click thumbs up to let me know you're enjoying the videos. Also, click subscribe if you're new. That way you'll see all of my future videos. And remember, all of my dog training content is completely free worldwide. For those of you that are already subscribed, tell me why you joined the dog training revolution and what the most valuable thing you've learned is in the comments below. Now I want you to know I'm really particular about the sponsors that I elect to work with and one of my top considerations is that they offer a way to make your life better. PetFlow.com does this wonderfully. PetFlow's innovative pet food delivery service allows you to choose your brand of dog food from hundreds and how often you want it delivered. Literally, just choose the brand of food you like and how often you want it delivered. Two steps, that's all you have to do. Now, of course, you can cancel or modify this at any time. Since you have to get your dog food anyway, get it from petflow.com slash zachgeorge and save a lot of time and hassle. When you do sign up for the auto shipping of your dog food, make sure you enter code ZAC20 when you check out. That way you'll get 20% off of your first order. Now, let's go meet Calliope and her family. Stephanie, tell me why you decided to get a dog at this point in your life. We've been married for about three years, um, and it was just something that we felt that we could manage right now. We were both kind of settled in our job, had a normal routine, um, and felt that we could we were ready to, you know, make that commitment. And you got one of the higher maintenance breeds in that you have an Australian Shepherd. They have been bred for a long time to be uh, really high energy dogs, have lots of stamina. What have you done to kind of substitute for that? Because I'm assuming you don't have any cattle for her to herd. No, backyard. no cattle. Like, uh, <laughs> we take her on lots of walks. Um, we do a lot of fetch training. <laughs> so why do you think she's barking right now? <laughs> I think she really wants our attention. Um, I think she's gotten bored with her treat uh, and she's ready to, to move on to something else. <laughs> That's true. We were actually using this treat a moment ago uh, to kind of keep her attention focused on it so we could focus on having a conversation here, but she got bored with it. That's yep. so common for that to happen. <laughs> Okay, okay, I guess she wants me to hold it for her. I'll just do that. <laughs> that that'll um, happen. <laughs> <laughs> and so, under what circumstances does she typically bark? Um, she typically barks when she wants something. She also barks when she wants our attention, um, you know, especially if we're doing something, cooking dinner, putting up the dishes. It sounds like she barks under all possible circumstances. Pretty much. Uh, Brent, now how involved have you been with the training? And tell me about what your experience has been with Calliope so far. Primarily, I think I'm more of the uh, give her what she wants type of parent. I can't look at her and not give her what she wants. As soon as she wants to bark and stuff like that, I you know, just want to figure out what it is and fix it for her. And Stephanie's definitely more of the hands-on trainer and let's figure out why she's barking and fix it. Every family needs one of those. When I came over here the other night, she was really, really chatty. So I, I understand what you're going through right now. I totally get this. This is a very overwhelming thing mm -hmm. because even though you might be able to get your dog to stop for a second, they just go right back into it and you wonder, what am I doing wrong? I'm trying. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully we can clear up some of that confusion today. It's really important that you understand why your individual dog is barking. In Calliope's case, she's just simply barking because she wants to do Stuff. She's young, she's energetic. She wants to interact with the world and interact with people. This is what being a dog is all about. Look at this, she brings a ball because she wants to interact. I'll bet if I keep holding it, she'll start barking because she's saying, I really want to play with that ball. What are you waiting on? But we want to let her know you're only going to get this ball when you're quiet. So we want to make sure that we time our rewards during moments of quiet. Yes, good. There was a brief moment of silence there, so I, I gave her the ball. I'm going to elaborate more on that in a second. The reason that most dogs bark incessantly is because they're bored and not getting enough mental and physical exercise. So that's something you can do right off the bat to make things way easier with your dog. But you can still communicate to them that you don't want them to bark even when they're not exercised. It'll just be a little bit tougher to do. But there are no real ways to guarantee that your dog is not going to bark when you're not present. Therefore, it's very important. It is vital to make sure that you set up training scenarios when you are at home so that you can communicate to your dog how 
you want them to behave. Today we're going to do three different exercises, I hope, that will uh, communicate to her that we prefer the quieter version of her. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you initiate training, <laughs> like basic obedience training, does mm -hmm. she immediately start going into barking mode? Uh, she'll bark if we don't give her the reward immediately. <laughs> She's like, hey, you forgot my reward. Let's pick up the pace here a little bit. She's very good at remembering that she deserves a treat after she does a trick. <laughs> I see. We'll start to get a handle on that. The next thing we'll do is we'll teach her how to not bark when someone knocks at the door, at least how to not bark excessively when someone knocks at the door. And finally, we'll teach her how to uh, be quiet while she relaxes in her crate because she also has the habit of barking in her crate sometimes. Is mm -hmm. that right? That's right. The best time to correct unwanted barking is before it occurs. Dogs are really good about foreshadowing when they're about to bark. So if you can, if you see that they're thinking about barking, and if you know your dog really well, you'll know what I'm talking about, get their attention on you and reward for compliance. Understanding why your dog barks is key, but with most types of unwanted barking, you'll need to be able to get their attention on you first in order to get them quiet. Once you've done that, then you'll be able to reassure them if they're nervous or guide them if they're just excited. Stephanie said that she tends to bark pretty much immediately if you don't give her a treat right after. So what we're gonna try and do right now is teach her that we're not always gonna give her the treat instantly. and She still needs to be quiet. Yes. I mean, right there, you could see it in her eyes. She was really thinking about barking. She used some minor restraint. We need to acknowledge those, those small bits of progress. No. Notice I'm being very careful to not reward during the barking. Every time I say no, I'm gonna make sure I don't give her a reward, letting her know that that thing is what kept the reward from being given to her. No. Yes, good. Yes, good, right there. I pushed it a little bit, but she started to get quiet. Did you see that? It is worth noting that if you were teaching your dog something new, say like roll over or shake hands and they started to bark, that you would want to ignore the barking and focus on the new behavior or focus on making it a how to not bark training session. I wanna make sure that I can get her eyes on me. This is not optional. We'll have to be able to do this later on for when we're teaching her to not bark in more distracting situations like our next exercise. So I wanna make sure that I've got good eye contact with her by doing this. Here we go. Yes. Good, I had a good look at me right there. But I don't want her ultimately looking at a treat. I want her looking into my eyes. So I think she might follow my hand if I do this. Clippy, look at me. Yes, good. Letting her know I love it when she looks at me. That's so important. Now that we built some preliminary communication, let's see if we can gradually get Calliope to be quiet for a little bit longer. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna reward after five seconds. Now I'm gonna see if I can get another seven seconds. Look at me, quiet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Very good. That was seven seconds of silence. Now I'm going to try and get 10 seconds of silence. Six, seven. Oh, I pushed her to failure. I'm going to take a step back. Look at me. Quiet. One, two, three. Yes. Okay. Now we're going to try and get, we're going to, I'm going to try 10 seconds again. Eight, nine, 10. Yes. Good. I'm going to give her a really extra big reward there, letting her know, look, Silence got you an amazing reward. Barking didn't really get you much. You have to be overwhelmingly consistent when teaching this. Uh, uh, uh. Great restraint there, really good restraint. So I love that. You're doing terrific. Don't be stingy on your rewards when it's clear that your dog is on the right track. Have a bowl of treats like this. These are really tiny pieces. They can be kept at room temperature and most dogs really like treats like this. It just makes sure they're soft and your dog really loves them. Whoa! Right now we're not focused on really fine tuning the communication, but rather establishing basic communication. In other words, I'll reward you, I'll give you what you want, as long as you do something for me and you're quiet when I ask you to do it. I'm ready to move on to our next step, which is teaching Calliope how to be quiet when someone knocks at the door. This one's gonna be a lot more challenging though. First, I'd like to see where we are. If you go out and you just start knocking on the door, I want to see if I can get control of her. Uh, 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 oh, a little much. Come on, come on. Come here. Sit. Almost, right there. She looked at the treat and she's like, no, I can't handle it. 
I gotta go check that out. That gave okay. me an idea of, of what we could expect if someone is really knocking, but sure. we have to work up to that. She's not quite ready for that because she was barely responsive. I think our next step needs to be knocking one time and then really solidifying that we like that she was quiet. Start small, gradually increase the difficulty, acknowledge small victories, and be prepared to be consistent for several weeks on this. Set up training scenarios. Remember, if you wait for someone to come to your door to then focus on training your dog, your dog is likely not going to be focused on you. Dogs don't respond well to an unfocused teacher. Our goal now is to get success without overwhelming Calliope. Our game plan is to start with one knock and work our way up. Sit, look at me. Yes, good. Hold on. Look at me. Okay. Yes. Yes, good. Look at me. I really want those eyes on me. No. No. Good. Stay good. Nice work. Go ahead. Yes, so you can see by easing her into it, she's a lot more responsive. Come on up. <laughs> she didn't do wow. anything. Wow, I mean, that, that deserves to be accurate. That's something she just looked at me. Really, really awesome. You can't ask for much better than that for the first training session. When teaching your dog to behave quietly, you'll want to practice in a number of scenarios. Let's see if we can encourage Calliope to not be so vocal while in her crate. When you're dealing with dogs this smart, they can tell when your attention is divided. You might notice that when I go to address camera, she's saying, hey, what about me? And so here, I'm gonna look at the camera. Ah. My attention's divided as far as she thinks right now, but it's not really. Yes, good job. Hey, I like that one a lot. She's doing really, really well here. I'm so proud of her. For those of you that have dogs at home that tend to bark when you go to work, 20 minutes to an hour of fetch before work will substantially uh, decrease the barking in almost all circumstances. If you have a super high energy dog that barks when you're away, you'll need to exercise them first thing in the morning and possibly at lunch for the next several months. High energy dogs are much more high maintenance, they require a lot more and they're not easily satisfied. Fetch is the path of least resistance when it comes to satisfying a dog physically and mentally. Now I'll have an amazing video in the description of this video that will show you everything you need to know to teach your dog a perfect fetch. If your dog barks while you're not at home, but they're not really super high energy, you might be able to get by with taking a 20 minute walk around the block with some dogs. Having chew toys that your dog really likes while you're gone will also discourage barking, but it's no substitute for exercise before you leave. When you go to set up training scenarios like we did today and your dog starts barking, if you notice that they're not very responsive to the treats and that they keep barking no matter how much you try and get their attention onto you, that means you're asking them to do something that they're not yet prepared for. You need to take a step back on your training and make those drills a little bit easier for your dog in the meantime and then slowly work up to those. Separation anxiety is another reason that dogs bark when you leave the house. If you feel like this is your dog, I'll have a video in the description that will give you tips on separation anxiety. Dogs like Calliope are the most teachable dogs in the world, but they're also the dogs that people give up on the quickest and the most because they do have so much energy. If your dog is energetic, they're brilliant, but you do need to put in time with them and teach them how to listen to you. Lastly, avoid gimmicks like bark collars or sprays designed to teach your dog not to bark. Remember, these address the symptom and not the cause. If you want long-lasting, real results, you have to learn how to prioritize communication with your dog. What questions do you guys have specifically on today's lesson. Well, you talked about that we needed to have dedicated training sessions every day. In uh, addition to um, doing it as needed, how long do you think we need to have those dedicated training sessions every day? Uh, it varies from dog to dog, but I would say with Calliope, since the habit is so ingrained with her, several weeks, three okay. to four weeks of training, uh, you know, five minute training session should do the trick, but you'll also wanna be really, really consistent in day to day life. I think you guys did totally awesome today. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank um, you so much. And if, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. If you guys like this video, click thumbs up. Also make sure you're subscribed. I have lots of new fun videos planned. Don't forget to set up automatic pet food delivery today with petflow.com slash George. I'll have that link in the description. I wanna give a special thank you to our patrons on patreon.com slash George. Thanks to you, we're able to do a lot more with our videos. If you guys wanna help out and contribute, that's completely voluntary. I'll have that link in the description. And don't forget to like me on Facebook at facebook.com slash George and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. My last video can really be a matter of life or death for some dogs. 
Every dog has to know how to stay at the front door when it's open. If your dog doesn't, that is the next video you need to watch. A number of your dogs suffer from separation anxiety. Check out that video if you're struggling with this. And if you find that you're having a number of behavior problems with your dog, you're very likely not exercising them right. I'll show you how to get through some of the most common problems of teaching fetch and everything you need to know to teach a perfect fetch. Thanks again for subscribing. And thanks to our patrons on patreon.com slash Zach George. You guys rock.